In this episode, I'll show you how to take the EMA cross strategy and turn it into buy and sell signals that you can use in your auto trading bot. To complete this episode, you'll need to have completed the previous episode where I outlined for you how to calculate your EMA cross strategy. That includes things like generating your EMA indicators, uh, generating your EMA cross indicator, and learning how to run it in an automated manner. At algoquant.trade, we love building profitable algorithms, and Algorithm 1 is a great example of that. In the past three weeks, it has generated 10.1% net returns, and backtesting shows that it's generated 102% of net returns. If you want to get access to the trading signals that it generates for foreign exchange and crypto, sign up to algoquant.trade today. Through the EMA cross strategy as we're going to be using it in this tutorial series. Now, a quick note for everyone who's watching, this is just an example strategy. I haven't back tested it. I make absolutely no guarantees about the results. I'm purely using it for demonstration purposes only. So please don't apply this to your trading strategy without a little bit of extra testing. All right, let me talk you through the strategy. So how an EMA cross strategy works is a trade is only generated when two EMAs cross each other, hence the name EMA cross strategy. In our scenario, we're going to be using the 50 and the 200 as our two EMAs. So a buy signal will be generated when an EMA 50 crosses above the EMA 200. In the strategy, that's an uh, indication that the trend or momentum uh, of the trade is going to, or of the, the currency pair is going to start trending upwards. In a similar manner, the a sell signal is generated when the EMA 50 crosses below the EMA 200. Now, in more advanced tutorials, which you can get if you subscribe to the channel, uh, I'll be starting to talk you through how you can also add in a few little extra features so that, for instance, if you have an open buy um, position and you suddenly generate a sell signal, you can sell off all of your signals and kind of reduce your risk, but that's a future one. All right, let me talk you through then how we go from a buy signal getting generated to calculating the buy values that we might be using. So here's the rules. Number one, for each trade, the stop loss is the corresponding highest EMA. So in our scenario, it's always gonna be the EMA 200, whether it's a buy or a sell. Now, if we have a buy signal, the entry price, which is known as the stop price, is the high of the previously completed, completed candle. All right. Uh, the take profit then is the absolute distance. So talking about a green candle, the take profit is the absolute distance between the stop price and the stop loss added to that entry point. So it's just a one-to-one -one strategy. Now, if we're talking about a sell signal, it's pretty much the opposite. So the Stop loss is always going to be that EMA 200 value. The entry price is the low of the previously completed candle. All right, so the entry price is just the low of that previous candle. The take profit then is the entry, the distance between the entry price and the stop price subtracted from that entry price. And that just kind of gives us a one-to-one -one from a sell position. All right, hopefully that all made sense. Let's get back to the code. In the previous episode, I showed you how to use a strategy function to really start to work through the parts of your strategy, getting the data and calculating the indicators. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to turn that information uh, into a series of trade signals that your trading bot can use to make signals on your behalf. This sets the stage for our future episodes where I'll start to show you how to use these signals to feed into MetaTrader, calculate your volume and make trades on your behalf. So pretty exciting stuff. So let's talk about the function a little bit. Trading signal has three components of uh, several components. The first component is going to be your take profit. Your second component is going to be your stop loss and your third comp component is going to be your stop price. Now for this particular trading bot, we're only going to be dealing with buy stops and sell stops. Hence the reason why I say there's only three components to it. All right, let's talk about the function. So we're going to create the function called determine trade and it's going to have three variables in it. The data, which is a data frame with all of your um, indicators on there. Then the two EMAs that we're using for our EMA cross function. Now, 
For those of you who've been with me on the journey of creating this, you'll know that I always comment uh, my code, but the comment in this one is going to be a little bit long. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste it from my example code uh, that I use when I'm building these episodes. So that's just to save a few minutes on the video. In the function, then, I, I basically record uh, what are going to be the, the parameters around the function, which is exactly what I went through in the previous segment. Okay, so for each trade, the stop loss is the corresponding highest EMA. Then I go through what we're going to do for a buy and for a sell and what we're going to do for the take profit. So the first part of this function is actually going to be making sure that the EMA values aren't equal. As you can imagine, if you have two EMAs that are the same, you're going to end up with a, basically an error in your code. So rather than waiting for this to error out and be a problem, we're going to put a little check in right at the start of the function to make sure that that's not the case. Now, for those of you who are keen programmers there, you'll probably ask yourself, well, why didn't you do this earlier uh, in the, you know, in the program? I just decided not to and thought this would be a good place to do it. There's absolutely no reason why you couldn't just do that check right at the start of the series that we've been doing. We're going to use that check also to determine which one is the greater of the EMAs. Now, throughout our code, we've tried to make it sure that, you know, the EMA one is the lower one and the EMA two is the higher one, but there's really no guarantee um, that that's going to happen. And to be honest, there's no real need to enforce that. Uh, the way that this code works and passing the variables around, we can kind of work with whatever one is higher, as long as they're not equal, like I said. So we basically want to do a check. If EMA one is greater than EMA two, the EMA column that we'll be using for our stop price is going to be an EMA one column and a minimum value, which we'll talk about in a moment, is going to be <coughs> EMA one. And then we'll just do the opposite for EMA two. And then we'll raise an error if the EMAs are equal. Now we're going to create a few extra columns on our data frame. The purpose of these columns is to record the values if we have a trade signal to be generated. It's just easier to add all of the columns, uh, add, sorry, add this column to all of the different rows um, rather than try to do it ad hoc. It, if you do it ad hoc, you end up with these NA values and they can really mess around with your program in the future. So this time we're really just going to, you know, add those extra columns. And before we do that, we're actually going to copy the data frame. Now, you don't technically need to do that, but if you don't, what will happen is pandas will generate a copy warning, and that can be really, really confusing if you're working through and suddenly, you know, you start to modify a copy. So all we're going to do is just create a copy of our data and call it data frame. Okay, we're going to set all of our trade values to zero, zero, and that by the way, just make sure that it's a float, which is what we need. And now we're going to iterate through the data frame and start to build our trading signals. Now, the cool thing about this, uh, which I'll talk about in a future episode or future series, probably, uh, will actually be about how you can use this to chart 
uh, your trading values and from the past. And that's a really, really quick and dirty way to kind of have a look at your trading and see if it would be profitable or not. But a bit out of scope for this one. First thing we're going to do is we're going to skip any rows that are less than the minimum value. The EMA is not going to work uh, until we have the two EMAs in operation. So for instance, if we have an EMA 50 and an EMA 200, you're really not going to get anything until you get to the 200th row or two, you know, the 201st entry. Now, another thing to remember here is, and I don't cover this in this particular code, but if you're using an EMA, you really want to be waiting until the last, you know, like, probably two or three times the actual EMA before you start calculating it because an EMA is dependent on the previous values. And I talk about that a little bit in a past episode when we talk about the EMA calculator. Now we have a look at each row and we say, if EMA cross is true, and in Python, you can just do that by saying, if data frame dot location, I EMA cross that is true, then we determine if it's a green or a red candle. That's pretty easy. We just compare the open and the close if the open is less than the close, it'll be a green candle. And now we start to look at calculating our value. So the stop loss is always going to be the EMA 200 in this particular instance, or the larger of the two EMAs. So we'll set that now. Our stop price or our entry price is always going to be the high of that candle. And our take profit is going to be the distance between the stop price and the stop loss added to the stop price. So just a simple one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, and now we pretty much do the exact same, but flipped around for a red candle. So yeah, stop loss, it's going to be the EMA 200 in this case. Stop price will be the low of the previous candle because it's red, so we're doing a sell. Then we calculate the distance for the take profit. Now that we've generated our signal, we want to add it back into the uh, columns that we created earlier.
then we return the result back to the function. You can see here then, we use that data variable and we retrieve all of our trade event data. Got it set up in main, so we just run it. And there we have the information. Now, let's have a look at the true values. To look at the true values, i.e. the strategy results that return true, we're going to update our main.py. Okay, then we'll print it to the screen. Gonna push play. And how good is that? We've got a whole bunch of trade signals that we can use in our trading bot. In the next episode, I'll show you how to take those trading signals and make trades on MetaTrader.